All right, so um, I have been uh, I haven't been making as many videos because I've had such a hellacious time with allergies. So I'm either stuffed up or I'm a little bit brain fogged from the antihistamine. So I've been not really interested in doing videos. Um, hasn't been hasn't been the best, but I'm feeling pretty good right now. No antihistamines in my system, and this morning able to clear my head out pretty good. So I feel pretty good. But I wanted to do a series of videos on my Desert Island games and I've shared in the past my Desert Island games and they change they change probably I would say every three to four years my Desert Island games will change some are still on the list and some change drastically um, this has been this was the game that literally brought me back to tabletop sports gaming I had not played any tabletop sports game since 2006 when in 2017 I discovered this little book by John M. Stater by accident in 2017 and bought it and I loved it. Fell in love with this. I have this I'm never without this. I take this with me on all my trips. I take the dice and cards and and notebooks and uh, I'm never not with I'm this is this is always in my reach generally on a trip or something and uh it is my go-to game. Um and I love it. I've taken time off from it uh, obviously for periods like uh, during the last year or two with Apple I've been playing basically Apple football pretty much over the last 18 months 24 months something like that I can't remember exactly but this is still number one on my desert island list um, I can't remember whether it was on my desert island list three or four years ago when I shared that desert island set um, because I may have I may have been burned out on it but there is no doubt this is it and so I thought Today will feature making a new league, and I've had leagues. I, those notebooks of those leagues that I've completed or crapped out on, and just just got bored with whatever. Those are notebooks are all in the shed. Um, and so when I play, I'm either either play consistently the same league, trying to get as many years in the career gun, or I like to start over. And so I'm going to start over with an American Pro Football, founded by John Smith. This is uh, this league will have. Uh, It'll be a fall winter football league, six teams only, and they will play based on the uh, NFL rules of 1988. This will be a, a league born in 1988, right after the collapse of the United States Football League. But about the time that the run and shoot, which is part of this book, started to take off. So I wanted it to fall in a window in which you would see the run and shoot actually show up in pro league. So that's why I picked 1988 to found this league. And I have written down the uh, uh, available head coaches if I roll one. And then I, cre I create a team randomly. And then I've written down fake owners or investors in the league. And then I will, I will attribute one of these guys to a team I create. So let's go first with the Jack Motor Company. They, this, this, team will, this franchise market will actually be corporate owned by the Jack Motor Company. The Jack Motor Company is Japanese American cars. So Jack, J-A-C Motor Company, corporate owned. And let's find out what they're awarded. So remember, it, it doesn't matter where their headquarters is at. It matters who John Smith, who's selling franchise markets. Uh, we'll see where that market is. So first, I'm going to roll the market one or two. It's a major market uh, investment. This guy, this, this Jack Motor Company will purchase franchise rights to a major market or three through six. A minor market and four he's gonna end up purchasing a minor market and then I've actually been able to number every market in the game and I roll again this is high this is low we roll it's 11 to 66 53 so he ends up purchasing the San Antonio market that is too cool San Antonio one of my favorite cities it's one of the few cities for years ago I, I would love to have seen the Raiders Instead of Vegas, I wanted the Raiders in San Antonio. I love it. But San Antonio, I won't give them a nickname yet. I'm going to think about nicknames. I'll probably flip to the book and see if there's a San Antonio in the book. If there is, I may use that nickname. So San Antonio, that's the Jack Motor Company. Now let's roll to see what kind of coach they are. And that's going to tell me the name of their head coach. So they are a smash mouth team. I love it. Smash mouth. That means we take the first coach on, this, on the smash mouth list. That's Hank Barnes. So their coach is Hank Barnes. And then all I got to do is roll up the team. But they're San Antonio. All right, so the Lucas Wilson III is our second. So, again, we founded the league in 88. 
and John Smith, or maybe 80, you know, he founded the league to launch in 88. Maybe he founded it when the USFL was floundering. And he's found these buyers to invest in these franchises, and it's going to launch about the time the USFL in the spring fails. And this is a winter football league, so they'd be competing directly with high school football, college football, and American pro football. So I'm okay with that. It's a fictional world we live in here. So anyway, Lucas Wilson III, he is legacy money. So this means this guy has inherited somebody else's uh, fortune. And uh, what better for a billionaire who's inherited his money to play with a professional franchise? A bit of a vanity owner uh, who wants to be able to say, hey, look, I own a pro football team. But, you know, Lucas Wilson the third. let's find out what he buys. Oh, so he buys a minor market team as well. So he's not willing to gamble too much of his fortune. 26. This is going to be Knoxville. That's very cool. Knoxville. I like that. I like getting teams that aren't necessarily normal pro teams. Uh, markets. Knoxville, their coach, or their style, which will be a coach, Smash Mouth as well. Don't tell me I'm going to run out of Smash Mouth coach. This will be Billy Johnson. So Billy Johnson is our head coach. Uh, this team is owned by Lucas Wilson the third, Legacy Money, old money, right? Uh, playboy, probably a playboy, you know, Bruce Wayne without the Batman. <laughs> All right. The third is Shane Ibsen. Shane Ibsen founded Ibsen Optics and would be a billionaire having sold optics to all kinds of science, uh, uh, so all kinds of industry in, uh, innovations in which optics are required for, uh, for microscopes or for lenses or for telescopes. So Shane Ibsen, Ibsen Optics, let's see whether he invests a good portion of his money in a major market. Yes, he's going major market. This will be fascinating. 52. He's going to Ohio, Columbus, baby. I love it. So it's not, it's major, but it's not, I love that, Columbus. That's not going to be Cincinnati or Cleveland. It's going to be right smack in the middle. I love it. And to me, Ohio, it's the birthplace of professional, American professional football is Ohio. Gotta have an Ohio football team. Ohio, like Texas, is football for me. History-wise, maybe Ohio is an obsessed with football, but it was the birthplace. And uh, so I love that. Columbus. And again, let's find out what kind of coach they have. Damn, Smash, that's my last Smash Mouth head coach. Now, I have other head coaches that can do it. So Walter Cook, if I roll another Smash Mouth coach, Walter Cook can do it from the balanced category. So our last one, and Charlie... Dravanovich was capable of being a balanced coach. He is now going to get to do what he wants to do. Charlie will be a smash mouth coach. And that's it. I don't have any more straight smash mouth coaches left. Dravanovich for the Columbus team. We don't know yet. I like the Columbus team in here. It has a great nickname, the Owls, the Columbus Owls. All right, here we go. The, the fourth owner uh, is Ronald Beverly of Beverly Cosmetics, the world's largest cosmetics organization selling makeup and cream, face cream, etc. to one half of the world's population that invests, that, that cares about their, their uh, you know, appearance, right? So all of these, uh, all of these first world countries, uh, the ladies dolling themselves up with hairspray and yeah, made them rich, made, made, made Ronald Beverly a rich man. He is in a minor market, but not so rich that he's willing to risk his fortune on a big market team. And 63, 63 is Tulsa. Ooh, I like that too, Tulsa. And this coach cannot be a smash. Well, he could be. I do have one. Okay, three is actually bought balanced. And that's going to be Phil Reynolds. So Tulsa has a balanced coach. Phil Reynolds. All right, sweet. So that's Ronald Beverly of Beverly Cosmetics. Uh, he will have the Tulsa franchise. Market, the minor market. And again, these teams battle for markets, right? So it's kind of cool, depending on how close they are to each other. All right, our fifth, uh, our fifth uh, investor slash owner is Howard T. Robbins, real estate. So he made his fortune in real estate. Let's see. And he's going minor market as well. This is cool. 55, Shreveport. Oh, damn, Shreveport. Shreveport, Louisiana. The coach here is, oh, Smash Mouth. And I do have one guy left capable. That's Cook. Smash Mouth, Walter Cook, who really can do balanced. 
but he's willing to take a job and do what the owner wants. So this is going to be a smash mouth football league. Dude, that's amazing. 1988, I would have thought we might see a run and shoot team. Maybe we'll see one. Uh, so Walter Cook's the head coach of Shreveport. Don't know the nickname yet. And that is owned by Howard T. Robbins, a real estate. Uh, he made his billions in real estate. All right, Matthew Carlisle is our final owner. He made his fortune in banking and investments. Let's find out what market he's invested in. He's invested in a minor market team as well. 44. He's going to take North Texas Amarillo, Lubbock. Uh, nor I, I kind of like just North Texas. Yeah, let's go North Texas. North Texas uh, coach. Four. Ah, balanced. So that's our last balanced coach. That's Sam Wells who can do run and shoot. So balanced is Sam Wells. And Sam Wells, if I wanted to, um, if North Texas struggles, instead of firing him, he could shift into a run and shoot pocket. Cook can actually shift. Uh, he's balanced, so he could shift into a balanced coach if they're struggling. And, of course, Drabanovich up here is also a balanced coach. So these guys technically could change what they do, right? So it makes them more dynamic coaches. So that's cool. Okay. So Matthew Carlisle made his fortune in banking and investments. He owns the North Texas rights. I don't know yet where his uh, stadium will be. It'll either be in Amarillo or Lubbock based on the uh, chart here. And there, we have founded. Uh, so uh, the, the league founded in 1986. It's taken him uh, two years. It's taken him a couple of years to find all of his investors, sell these uh, franchise rights. And then it's taken them time to build their teams. And in 1988, the fall of 90, uh, 1988, they will launch their professional league. Uh, we've got it set. So there we have it. That's done. Now all you got to do is make the teams. So let's go here, San Antonio. And again, I'm not going to name them yet. we got a quarterback, running back, uh, um, wide receivers. And then we have what are called linemen, which really technically are defense, but it could be your offensive linemen as well, linebackers. DBs. He is Smash Mouth. Smash Mouth gets a plus one to running backs, minus one to receivers. Right? So this is Smash Mouth for now. I'm going to rewrite all this. And the linemen actually go up plus one, but the DBs drop one. So now we roll them up. If I roll, and I have a rule, if I roll an 18, that means that team has one of the stars that's allowed at a position. So the rules state. There can only be one star at any of the six positions in the league. So if you have a big league, there's only six superstars in the league. Well, my league could potentially have a star on uh, uh, every team could end up with one star or, you know, one team could have six, all six stars. But if I roll an 18, that's going to assume that that, that that team starts with a star. Okay. And, of course, uh, I won't roll an 18 most likely. 9, 10, 11. And the QB is not affected. Right? There's, he's an 11. Running back gets a bonus to this raw roll because it is a Smash Mouth team. Six, seven, eight. Good thing we got the bonus because that was not going to be pretty. Eight. The wide receiver, though, is, wow, 11, 12, drop it, 11. So they've got the ability to pass the ball even if they choose to pound the rock. Not bad. 11 and 11 are plus three. So we got plus three, plus two, plus three. So the offense for San Antonio is plus eight. Average is about eight to nine. So, again, not bad. All right, Lyman with a Smash Mouth team gets a plus one. Ooh, seven, eight. Good thing they had the plus one. That's a plus two, so that's not good. Linebackers are unaffected by coaching. Thirteen. They got really good linebackers. I believe that's a plus four. Let's double check that. As much as I've played this, I can never remember because it's different than, say, Dungeons and Dragons where the ability scores are higher in this. Uh, linebacker uh, 13, yep, is a plus 4. Okay, DBs are a minus 1 in the Smash Mouth team. Uh, that's, ooh, not good. 8 minus 1 is 7. They're going to be a plus 2. So this defense, not too hot. That's going to be 8 plus 8. Well, I shouldn't say that. Plus 8, again, is about average. So there's San Antonio's base right now. Right? Okay, so let's go on and make um, Knoxville. Right, and here we go, QB, running back, wide receiver, lineman, linebacker, DB. They are smash mouth, so plus one back, minus one receiver, plus one lineman, 
minus 1 DB, and here we go. The quarterback is, oh, Lord, 6. Yeah, I see why they're smash mouth now. Plus 2. They have a poor quarterback uh, room. Oh, no, 6, 7, 8. They got up to 8, but there's still a plus 2. This team is hurting. Their offense not too hot. Oh, my God, 9, 10. That ain't horrible. 9, 10 with a minus 1, though, is 9. 9 at least is a plus 3. Their offense... That's three, four, five, six, seven. And you think, well, that's no big deal. Well, yeah, the, if they don't win in the offseason, they can lose more points. This team could go into a war of attrition. This franchise just ends up in the dust. So you want to even you want at least be on the high end of these numbers. So eight is the high end of plus two. Well, a six is the low end, which means he could drop to a plus one pretty easily. Right? Nine is could drop to a two pretty easily. So you want to be on the high end of those numbers, so it's harder to drop down and easier to go up. All right, Lyman, uh, seven eight. Holy cow, this team not very good. This is owned by Lucas Wilson the third, legacy money. So again, we got a playboy. It's all vanity. He just wants to say I own a team in the brand new APFL. Uh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. He's he has to hope his coach and his somehow coaches their heads up, or that he lands something here in the off season. Oh, Lord, six. Linebacker, six. This guy. Okay, so we're, we, we can see what, leg, what happens with legacy money. They just spend it. They don't know what they're doing. DB is 10, 13, minus one. So they got decent DBs. That's a plus three. And that's going to keep them at least competitive with a plus eight. Uh, again, six, seven, eight, plus eight defense. So they're at least equal to San Antonio. Unfortunately, they're giving up a point to San Antonio's defense. That's Knoxville. All right, Columbus. All right, this will end up being my favorite team probably because, I, again, I'm a big Ohio. I love the idea of football in Ohio and, of course, Texas, North Texas. That's where football reigns supreme in our country, period. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, quarterback for Columbus, running back, wide receiver. I believe this guy's a smash mouth too. Yeah, this is Charlie Durbanovich who can also go balanced. So, again, Smash Mouth's plus one, minus one. Lineman, linebackers, DBs, plus one, minus one. And here we go. What is Columbus all about? Uh, eight, nine. Quarterback's going to be plus three. That's not bad. We'll take that. Running back, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That is the top end of that scale. So, again, it will be easy to jump to a plus four in the offseason if they, if they can uh, win and also roll an improvement. And then we got 10, 11, minus 1, so we got 10 at wide receiver. So this team is capable of passing, although the quarterback is on the low end of plus 3. Their wide receiver at 10 is plus 3. So look at this team. We got an offense plus 9. Remember I told you you're going to find the average is going to be between 8 and, uh, eight and 9. And again, we got a 7, 8, and a 9. So this is so far the best offense in the league by just one point. All right, the linemen, it's going to be 8, 9, 10, 11, plus 1, 12. That's a plus 3, top end of plus 3. So they're on the verge of improving. 9, 10, 11, 12 for the linebackers, plus 3. So their defense is looking like it's going to be the best so far as well. However, the DBs are 10, wow, 14, minus 1 is 13. That's a plus 4. This is the best team in the game so far, 7, 8, 9, 10. So they are plus 9 offense, plus 10 defense. And Columbus looks like they're the preseason favorites so far to at least be winners. We got three teams left to do. Again, Smash Mouth and Smash Mouth. He has to be Smash Mouth on behalf of his owner. If they start to struggle or the offseason before I would fire the coach, he could switch to his second calling, which is balanced. But not every coach has a second calling. So if they stunk I would, and he didn't have one, I would fire him. However, if he, again, if he, if he struggles and I keep him, then I would just change it to balanced and I would readjust these numbers for the offseason. And that's how I'll deal with a coach that can do two things. All right, let's get on to the fourth team in our 16 professional league. This team is out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And they are balanced, I believe. Tulsa is balanced, yes. So there will be no modifiers for these guys running back. So what I roll is what they're about. 
and their coach cannot switch, I don't believe. Uh, he is not, no, he is no second calling. So if they stink, he'll be fired. All right, we got 10, 11, 12. Good, plus three. Top end of the plus three. Already looking good for Tulsa. 10, good. Plus 10 is plus three. So things are starting to look up as we're starting to see better talent here. Ooh, but the receiving core is on the bottom end of plus two. This team... Not great receivers. Holy cow, but they're going to be at plus eight. Remember that average I told you about? We're seeing it play out right now. Okay, linemen are going to be nine, 10, 11, 12, plus three. I haven't rolled an 18 yet, obviously, as you've noticed. 10, 11, 12, uh, rolling an 18 is about a 2% chance, and it's pretty rare. And again, eight, nine for DBs, and that is also a plus three. So this team is a plus eight, plus nine. Tulsa is going to be competitive. Still not as good as Columbus 9-10, but Tulsa looking really good here on paper. All right, and we have yet to roll a star for any position. And again, uh, then a star can come up in the offseason next year. A star can be found on the chart. But when I build a team, I like to have a chance there's a star in the league to start. When you're building a league that's never played before, we don't know who the stars are going to be, right? Okay, so that was Tulsa. This is Shreveport, Louisiana. And I don't know what I'll call them yet, but they're also smash mouth. But this coach can change to balance, Walter Cook. So QB, RB plus one. Wide receiver minus one. And again, our linemen get a plus one bonus here. Our linebackers and our DBs get a minus one roll. So our quarterback is 8, 9, 10, plus three. Our running back is 9, 10, 11, plus one is 12. Our top end of plus three. They have a chance to improve in the offseason. 8, 9, minus 1 is 8, and this team is pushing the middle, well, the top end of plus 2, so that's not horrible. Their offense is going to mark out to 6, 7, 8. There's that 8 again, so we're going to have a lot of tight games in the first year, which is wonderful. 9, 10, 11, 12, plus 1, 13. Our linemen are going to be plus 4, so the best, offensive best defensive line in the league is found in Shreveport. Our best defensive backs in the league are found in Columbus, so, so far, we've got, and our best linebacking core in the league is found in San Antonio. So, best linebackers, best DBs, and now the best defensive line here. We have not seen really a great quarterback or a great running back or a great receiver yet. They're all, the offenses are somewhat dull here, which is generally true in small leagues and minor league teams. You know, UFL, for instance, defenses generally have the edge you know, uh, you, you know, your best talent is probably not going to be found in the secondary league until that league builds reputation and money. Uh, and of course, you'll never see the UFL worth a damn because they don't compete. They have no intention of trying to sign better players or retaining better players to compete. So the UFL is quite literally a transitory transitional league. And that's why I can't, I can't support it because they don't even pretend that they're trying to be a, a great league long term. Uh, they're, they're asking us to watch a, a league that they know is is migratory i just i don't i have no interest in that i mean i'd rather watch college which at least you know those guys are migrating all right but they're migrating to become professionals there's a reason right six seven nine that's my opinion take it or leave it there'll be people who whine that i have an opinion but i don't give a shiner and here we go that's going to be seven eight nine minus one is eight plus two this defense is seven, eight, nine, plus nine. So pretty solid defense. So Shreveport has a chance, depending on how the dice fall for them in this this season, they have a chance to do some damage. So far, this is going to be a very competitive league. We really don't have. I mean, this plus ten is huge for Columbus because every single team in the game is going to be at a negative. Even their own offense would be at a negative. So Columbus has a big advantage in that no one yet will even be even at home against this defense. So that's huge advantage. Not one offense yet uh, really is going to do... I mean, there's, there's one or two offenses here that will get an advantage at home against some of these defenses, but Columbus has right now a giant advantage. Well, a plus 10% scoring advantage. That's pretty epic over the course of the season. All right, last but not least is North Texas. And I'm going to name them right now because I know, uh, inspired by one of my brothers... Favorite nicknames for his teams, the North Texas Vinegaroons. Vinegaroons are scorpions. So I'm naming this team in uh, honor of my old my oldest brother, uh, as he has had a team in many of my leagues over the years named the Vinegaroons. So we'll just make this 
the Vinegar Runes. And the Vinegar Runes are, are banking on a run and shoot. No, balance. Sam Wells can be a run and shoot if they start to fail. So he's balanced. Which means no favoritism here. In reality, my brother, uh, I would say, is pretty balanced as a coach. When we play head-to-head -head or we play Madden, things like that. He does, though, like me, feature. He likes running and he likes tight ends. Very, very similar that way. I'm a defensive guy. I love defense. I, I love, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm more defensive oriented. My brother is more offensive oriented. So we have great games of Madden. Uh, here we go. Quarterback, North Texas Vinegaroons is going to be 11. No modifier. So that's a plus three. The running backs are uh, eight plus two. So this wouldn't make my brother happy to have a running back that's on the that's on the low end. Uh, 10 though for receivers. So quarterback and receivers, not too bad. That's going to give them the plus eight. So this league right now literally is an average of eight. We have a, we have a seven, the worst in the league, and we have a nine, the best in the league. The rest are all eights. So right now, North Texas, depending on how this defense comes out, they're at least can hang with most of the teams in the league offensively. Their linemen, oh, six. Uh, they're on the bad side of that plus two. They could drop to a plus one pretty easily. And they're going to have to work hard to improve to a plus three. So one reason, remember, you only have a, ran, you have a chance to level up a number in the offseason. You can spend money to try or you get one free roll. So you can imagine how hard this plus six is going to be to reverse. You can't draft a superstar necessarily and rectify this in one offseason. So... There can be a definite problem with improving some of these ratings. Okay, we got 9, 10, 11, 12. So the linebackers are really good, plus 3. They're on the verge of a plus 4, so they're close to a plus 4 already. And defensive backs are 15. There's our best defensive backfield. That is plus 4. So they're going to have uh, 7, 8, 9. Again, my gosh, we got some good teams here. So Tulsa. So let's take a look here. Our first group, we've got an 8, 8. In San Antonio, we got a 7-8 in Knoxville. They're struggling. This is our legacy nouveau riche, right? Inherited daddy's money, and he's uh, he's decided to play in pro football. Columbus, uh, fantastic defense, really good offense at 9. Tulsa is 8-9, so their defense is solid. we got Shreveport at 8-9, and we've got North Texas at 8-9. So it's your best guess who's going to win this first season's championship. I don't think Knoxville is going to pull it off. Uh, that plus seven against every defense is going to be in a negative. Columbus with that plus 10 defense is going to put every offense they face in a negative. So right now, Columbus has the edge. Columbus's offense also is going to see against two of these teams a modifier. And at home is going to see a modifier against everyone. So Columbus is going to have a negative against almost everyone. And they're going to get a positive on offense against almost everyone depending on home or away. So Columbus right now is would be the preseason favorite, although we're talking 5% differences uh, between these teams. So it's going to be one heck of a first year. Um, let's see if I can think of names before I call this a video quits. Uh, but by the way, also, uh, I've got my other, I've got a couple of my other um, uh, Desert Island games I will talk about. But this is, this would be number one on my Desert Island list. Again, um, whether it's been on my list all the time or not, the reality is I've, I never leave home without this. This is never not within my reach of my desk, or and it's always in my briefcase or you know available. And that being said, tells me that I would not be caught without this if I ended up on a desert island. So anyway, and this has a full uh, game simulator. This little book, uh, I don't play it for the full game simulator, but I can. So when I get to the championship, if I want to play out the complete game, every snap every single down of football I can between these teams. However, I don't. I like to simulate the league and get on to the next season. Uh, but my point is, the APFL, the same founders, oh, didn't just, the, the part of the investment, and maybe that's why there's minor league, so many of them are minor league markets, or minor markets, is the same group agreed to not only buy a football franchise, but to buy a dead ball franchise. So I'm going to be making six teams in a dead ball league Featuring these same owners with different, obviously different coaches, different players will be in dead ball. So this league, this group of people will represent professional football and baseball in their respective cities. And so I will be making, this same group of owners will be making uh, teams. 
And again, probably in the same markets, right? That's what they've agreed to do. They agreed to buy into two professional leagues, one baseball, one football, and then they purchased whatever they wanted to start at as far as their market. And there we have it. So I'll be making teams in dead ball as well, just so you know. And I like small leagues because I like to finish leagues. I like to see tight competition. I like to wrap up seasons. I like to move on to the next season. So I want, I want, I want leagues small and competitive so I can see some career unfold. So there you have it. That is those. Let's go ahead and name these guys. I did say I was going to try to name them. So first I'm going to look in the book. And if there's a team in this city, in the book, and I like the nickname, I may just use it. Um, that way it's not me inventing the nickname. It's me uh, trusting there is a person out there in the world that would say this is my team. Is San Antonio in here? Um, wow, how can San Antonio not be in here? Okay, San Antonio is not. Let's go. Let's steal one then. How about the San Antonio Bulls? How about that? I like the San Antonio Bulls. That sounds like Texas, don't it? San Antonio Bulls. Knoxville, do they have a team in here? I don't believe they do. It's a minor league market. I doubt they do, but you never know. Uh, yep, Knoxville Adams. Okay, cool. The Adams. A-T-O-M-S. That's very cool. Columbus. Now, we already know that Owls were in here, so I'll probably go with that because I've already said, I've already admitted I really like the Columbus Owls nickname. Also, um, what's cool about that is I love this helmet. It looks like the, uh, it's, an, it's that dark, like, brown with a, with a tan, like an owl, like a, like the, like the, like the, uh, the, uh, you know, the, um, coloring of an owl's head. That's pretty cool. So we're going to go owls. So Columbus is already my favorite. I told you that before I rolled the dice because uh, it's the birthplace of pro football. But also, uh, now I've rolled up a good team. I'm definitely going to be rooting for the Owls. Tulsa, let's see if Tulsa's got a team in here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I don't think they do. Trenton, they don't. So I'm thinking we go with the Tulsa... Let's go with the Tulsa. Dang. Huh. This is tough. Tulsa Wildcats. How about that? That's a perfect football name. Every high school in the country seems to be named Wildcats, or used to be. Tulsa Wildcats. That's perfect, right? It's very recognizable. All right, Shreveport. I think Shreveport does have a team in here, if I'm not mistaken. No, they do not. Shreveport, let's see here. Shreveport Grits Lightning. Shreveport. Hmm. Shreveport Panthers. Shreveport Stags. Uh, how about Shreveport Vipers? Right. What do they have down there? Copperheads, cottonmouth. What's the what's the venomous snake down in the south there? Vipers. I don't think they have vipers, but they have cottonmouth. They have uh, copperheads in the south. So there might be. So I can make like the Shreveport copperheads. The problem is I don't know. Do they actually have copperheads? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna call them the copperheads. I may find out there aren't copperheads in Shreveport, but I like the I like that Shreveport copperheads. Venomous snake. I know they exist in Arkansas because my family, when I go down there to visit my grandparents, I was always being warned about them. Copperhead. I think I spelled copper wrong. Gee, many Christmas, Jason. Copperhead. There it is. And then I've got my North Texas vinegaroons named after, uh, uh, in honor of my brother who's had a, he had a West Texas vinegaroons in my flash football league uh, years ago. And he, uh, uh, so I thought, what the heck, North Texas vinegaroons are perfect. Now, where do they play? Amarillo or Lubbock? Uh, let's do Amarillo. Let's put them in Amarillo. That's where they're going to play. That's where their stadium will be. So there you have it, folks. That is the American Pro Football League. It is founded in 86. It will launch in 1988, fall and winter. Uh, and it will be, uh, again, we have a schedule maker. The other thing, this, this book's worth two bucks just for the schedule. Uh, all the different schedules in here. I don't have to do the hard work of figuring out a schedule. 
six team schedules right here. It's going to be a 15 week uh, season, and the schedule's built for me. All I got to do is play the games. It's fantastic. It's worth it just to have the schedule maker in here. There you have it, folks. Thank you so much. And again, I may come back and do. Uh, again, I'm going to do uh, my de my my Desert Island games in the next few videos. This has been number one. Number two will be Dead Ball with Dice, uh, which is uh, Desert Island baseball. The only baseball game I have played consistently over the last couple of years is Dead Ball with Dice. I love this game. Uh, third, uh, uh, this would not be number two. They're not in order. This would be number one. Uh, uh, Dead Ball would be probably fourth because I'm not a huge baseball guy, but uh, I, I, I've had more fun. I don't want to not be without it. Uh, my favorite role-playing game, uh, White Box would go with me. This is a, a great game. You can get this on. You can get this role-playing game. This is basically a D and D, circa 1974 D and D replica, um, which is why it's called White Box. 140 pages of every possible rule you would ever need to play old school Dungeons and Dragons, and it's five dollars on Amazon. It is a masterpiece of what's called an OSR. For those of you who don't know the role-playing game community, this would be on my desert island as I've played the second most number of sessions in the last 14 years have featured White Box, uh, Basic Fantasy, and White Box. Um, I prefer White Box now to Basic Fantasy. This, 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 this pushed Basic Fantasy off my, my table uh, years ago, and it is what I play uh, when I play with my locals, old school D&D. This is what I use. Uh, believe it or not, I'm going to put one of my games that I invented on it because I I um, uh, have not been able to stop playing it, and I do believe it's the best game I've ever made. That's Big Country Boxing. That would go on my desert island. Uh, I have played probably 80 bouts of Big Country Boxing since uh, since releasing it. Uh, I probably I, I probably didn't play that many bouts finishing the actual play testing. So I've already got 200 bouts under my belt in the last month of Big Country Boxing. So Big Country Boxing, one of my own games, is on my desert island, and I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so that's on there. And then there is one more desert island game, and I will save that to share later. But uh, that'll give you an idea of what's coming. I'll talk a little bit about this. I'll roll up some characters. I will create, uh, again, the other uh, American Pro Football League. Uh, the, the owners will own American Pro Baseball teams. And I will make uh, a couple of, of those teams and players and share some games in that over the next few weeks. I will finish these and probably start rolling results for this career game. I have been less inclined to play full games lately. Um, I have been much more focused on um, dice and books. Dice and books. Um, because this is endless. This is infinite football for me forever. With a, a handful of pages and a couple of dice. And I'm playing football infinitely in just about any way. This is infinite, both history and fictional. I can literally grab a box score or a final results from any baseball manual or any baseball stat book or online baseball and make the 1972 Cincinnati Reds and the 1972 Oakland A's uh, players and be playing any historical team within minutes. Uh, it is infinite. It is brilliant. And uh, it's accurate as well. So pretty cool. So anyway, I've got, and then by Big Country Boxing, I've talked about, I've shared some videos. I'll probably come back and, and share as I get a guy into the championship fights. We'll see how that goes. I will be sharing my historical boxers when they arrive, my cards that are coming. So I'll probably have some matches with my historical boxers and share that with you guys. So right now, uh, those are the four of five Desert Island games that have changed on my list or I've updated. Uh, the last time I did this was three years ago. Uh, and there were some different games on that list. There will be many of you remember what was on that list. And then I have one more I'm going to hold till the last day of this. So uh, stay tuned if you're interested in this. If not, be aware you're going to see some Desert Island videos uh, in the next few. So you may or may not be interested in those. But that's what it's going to be. Thanks for watching. Good day.